Good morning. Good morning. Yo, yo, yo. What's happening? Y'all can tell we're deep into getting the show ready we're for you guys. Preparing the show for the people. Baby, we get in the camera. We're preparing the show for the people. <laughs> yeah. Hello. 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 I haven't brought my mic down because I was still reading over you. <laughs> we're preparing, y'all. Welcome. Happy Saturday. Share it out. Hit the like button. Let people know. Other people you know that are moving to the D.C. area. Heath and Tracy are on. Or just moving in general. Because we help people too. That's just moving. Even if they're not moving to the DMV. Y'all, we talking about moving to the DMV. It's all good. Put your questions in the chat. We're going to pull them up. Question time, question time. We're not talking about a specific city today. We'll tell you later what we're talking about. We're still trying to finish up what we're talking about, y'all. We're talking about the DMV, but, you know, a specific city meaning a specific city in the DMV. We can talk about specific cities. We're going to jump back into talking about specific cities in July. Yeah. So right now in June, we're answering your questions. People still want to know about North Carolina. We'll talk about North Carolina too. Sure, we'll talk about North Carolina. There's. You want to know about Atlanta? That's my hometown. We know about Atlanta. We lived in Atlanta 20 years. You want to know about South Florida? Tracy got you. I grew up there. I still got peeps there. I know what's going on there. So we got you covered. It's a big state, so we might have to work on that.
two more times. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. I still need to get my tea, by the way. I got three minutes. I got you, baby. Oh, thank you, love. Y'all see my flowers? I fell out a little bit this morning about the flowers, though. You know, it happens sometimes. When you've been married for almost 31 years, falling out. Falling out. Fallings out happen sometimes. Is that what we call it? No, we don't really fall out. So what do we call it, babe? Tracy getting mad. <laughs> Bye. Bye. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's Saturday morning, live, every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. EST. Heath and Tracy are in the building. Welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy. We meet here. Every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. EST, to demystify your relocation to the DMV. And so since Tracy and I are such transparent open-minded people you can ask us anything i'm more transparent than heath is though <sighs> no 
<laughs> yes. Look, I'm the most transparent dude any of these people know. Okay. I like it. The I like trust. it. Trust. Trust okay. and believe. You're transparent with me. Look, let me tell you. What, what y'all want to know? Man, been married for 31 years. Man has four children. Man has a job. Man has a YouTube, a podcast, some other stuff. Are you bragging? I'm just saying they they know everything about me. I'm very transparent. Is what oh, I'm saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It's not being braggadocious. Can, can I say something? My Heath, my Heath, listen to me, my Heath. My <laughs> husband works so hard, y'all. He works so hard during the work. He has a very difficult job. I will tell you this. He has a very difficult job. Sometimes he works very late at night. He Sometimes. works very early in the morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he loves his job, though. He loves his job. Yes. He's very well compensated. He loves his job. Mm-hmm. But he does this for you every Saturday morning. Can, right. we just, can we just, can we just, can we just. You're going to hit the, the applause button. Can we just, thank you, Heath. Thank you, Heath. <laughs> hey, you know, I just do what I can. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And that's to make up for my little temper tantrum this okay. morning. Okay, it's all good, baby. You know, hey, 31 years. I'm almost 31 years. I didn't I'm, really have a temper tantrum. No, no. It was just a, a It was little, like a little. <laughs> it was like a little little verbal whip. A little verbal like. <laughs> let, me t- let me pull you back in for a second. <laughs> you out here doing your thing thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we get up. He's like, I'm going to pick some flowers. I was like. Baby, I need to pull the show together. But the flowers are part of the show. Okay. Our our audience has come to know and love the flower game because the flower game is strong. Do y'all like the flowers? Yes or no? If you are a regular of the Heath and Tracy, Conversations with Heath and Tracy show on Saturday mornings. You got to show them the flowers, baby. Let me pose the question first. If you are a regular viewer of the conversations on Heath and Tracy's show. Or if you're a new viewer we and love you've our seen, regulars, by the way. And you've seen a couple of the shows or more and you've seen me talk about the flower game. Do you like do you like the flowers? Do you like for me to go into the flower situations and just add that to what it is that we're doing for our audience? Do you like that? This yes man or no? Gets up Saturday mornings, y'all, and picks <laughs> the flowers. Yes. We have some beautiful flowers in our garden. We do. And he is, okay, all right, I, I'll, I'll be better about it next weekend. Okay, cool, baby. Can we uh, have some uh, intro music for the uh, flower game today? Okay. You see the pressure? Flower the game. pressure. I can't find my music. Hang on, hang on. I don't have my music. Just hit. Oh, here just it is. Hit. Here it just is. Hit anything, baby. I don't know what to hit. hit okay, we'll just do this. Oh, my rose. I got to get my rose. I don't know. What is that? Party noise? What's party noise? No, that doesn't sound like that. No, no, I'm saying some music. Okay, like, wait. Like mood music or something. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> okay, so this morning, uh, what I wanted to do was to go a little heavier on the hydrangeas since they're beginning to pop. So the hydrangeas in the garden are very beautiful right now. Uh, you would also see that some of the hydrangea bushes that we have are hybrid in that they have multiple colors on the on the bush. So I love that because my dad used to do that. My dad was a, my dad was a master gardener. He taught horticulture, plant this pathology, is lavender, and biology. We, have, and we actually have lavender growing. In this our is yard. my section. This okay, is my section but of the show. Hurry up, though! Hurry up! This is my section of the show. I want you to hurry up. See how see how different we are, y'all. <laughs> We're so different. And so my dad actually used to. Uh, we had a bush in our yard when I was growing up that he purposely. Uh, crossbred and so on the bush there were multiple colors of hydrangea blooms on the bush and so we have something like that in our garden so I I really uh, enjoy that so you can see uh, there's some blue (laughs) we got some pink (laughs) right I'm really happy to see the blue and the pink though that's what I'm saying okay I'm really happy that makes me happy I think I want to make a whole one just of the blue and the pink so when I was doing the arrangement, what I wanted to do, what I decided to do um, was to go um, hydrangea on heavy on one side, and then on the other side, now I'm giving you some rose vibes, right? So we I have multiple species these. of roses in the garden, uh, I mean, right? So you can see kind of like how some of the petals are different. Okay, thank you, right? Heath. And then we have the lavender, so we bring in the smells. Thank you, And Heath. I forget what this is called. Y'all, y'all see what I deal with? 
Lord have mercy. Okay, Ron, with the super chat. Thank you. Good morning, Heath and Tracy. During the Q&A, can you suggest a community similar to Cascade? Oh, yes, we can. We can. We will do that. Shout out my man, Ron. Oh, thank you, Libby. I'm glad y'all like Heath Flowers because he really works hard on that. He really works hard on that. So I do it for Tracy, but I also do it for you. What are sweet? Uh, he really does it for you. Right. He really. He's no, been doing it for me. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, he's been doing it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm one of them spoiled wives, y'all. Look, look. My mother says it all the time. She says you're so spoiled. How many brothers on YouTube I hear doing the fresh cut flower game and bringing, bringing beautiful colors and vibes and information to people every week? There's some on. There's some on there. Black men. Yeah, I'm sure there are. We Black men to, cutting flowers on we YouTube. Don't, I'm gonna find them. Okay. I'm gonna find them. Anyway, <laughs> I appreciate y'all's appreciation. Y'all see how, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, John said y'all need to do a video. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved into this house with this beautiful garden. Yeah, but you also have to maintain the flowers yeah, in, we in do. the garden, too. We right? pay people to do that, though. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, it's just like, hey. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's jump back into why people are here, <laughs> why people are joining us this morning. So we're here every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And if you want to move to the DMV, we want to help. Do y'all notice how he sips his coffee? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Do y'all sip your coffee? <laughs> do you sip your coffee? <laughs> or do you drink your coffee? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. he'll tell you why he sips it. But anyway, um, if you have a question, Type it in the comments, and we will answer your question. Okay? We're going to try to answer all the questions we can get to today. You going you gonna to talk to the people? Yeah, so with respect to um, the, the sipping of the coffee, I was having some situations where, you know, my teeth, you know, you start getting older, your teeth not quite as white as they used to be and that kind of thing. And so then I was, since me uh, being a coffee drinker, uh, my oldest daughter suggested that. Yeah, I'm in rare form today, Libby. I started drinking through a straw, and then that way you don't have all of the dark coffee washing all over your teeth. I was like, I like that. That makes sense. It helps. So now I have the coffee, and I have the, the straw, and on the straw. is rubber to keep it from burning your lips. Yeah, because if you have a regular metal straw and you sip coffee through it or hot tea, you might get a little. Uh, you might. A little hot sensation on your lips. You might. <laughs> So you got to get make sure you get that rubber tip on the um, on the straw. All right. So welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy. <sighs> <laughs> you going to hit the button? No. Oh, you're not going to hit the button. I want you to talk about, for people that are just joining us that have never been here before, what the heck are we doing here? Because we all over the place this morning, y'all. It's all good. So if this is your first time here. My name is Heath. And I'm Tracy. Tracy and I are parents, podcasters, and we are joyfully married after almost 31 years. We uh, have a yeah. We have a podcast, and we are certified marriage coaches. We um, went to Howard University, and so we know Ain't a little you? bit about DC and the DMV in general. And this is our second stint in the DMV. So since we've moved back, and we moved seven people in the midst of the panorama, seven adults, <laughs> four adult children, and Tracy's mom plus me and Tracy. So we know a little bit about DMV. We know a little bit about moving. We know a little bit about parenting. We know a little bit about tech. We know a little bit about okay, a okay. number of things. <sighs> so we even do like a little coaching Yeah, we'll coaching do an appointment with you. We'll do a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you. If you want to talk about moving to the DMV, one-on-one. -on -one. We've had a few appointments with people. We, we welcome that. No worries there. Just uh, out in the description, you'll see the link to the appointment finder. He always also gives advice on... Uh, moving into the tech, if you want a different type of job, if you're already in tech, how to get better jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also, we also have a podcast, Joyfully Married After. Anywhere on your favorite audio platform. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And right now, if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button. Yes. That helps with the algorithm. Yes. That helps people find us and everything. So that's what we like there. Well, you know, Tracy and I put a lot of energy into the show and, and creating other shows. And so like you saw Ron contributing with the with the uh, super, super chat. chat. So we do, we do Oh, we're going to get to chat. Ron. Ron is one of our favorites. We do, <laughs> we do accept super chats out here, right? So if you're finding value in the information that we're delivering, we appreciate that And as well. welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy. Boom. Thank you. 
Conversations with Heath and Tracy, where we're here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. EST to demystify your move to the DMV. So we're just uh, uh, taking questions today. We're talking in general about life in the DMV. Uh, anything you have specifically that you want to know, make sure you put that down in the comment section. If you want to talk a little bit about uh, specific cities or uh, general information, questions for Heath and Tracy, things relating to North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, uh, DMV, marriage, relationships, whatever you want to talk about. We good. We good. Uh, but so let's see what's going on in the comments. That's far, Miss Tracy. All right. So we got Ron. Thanks for the super chat. Ron. Ron. Woo. Boom, yeah, boom, super boom, chat. Boom, boom, boom. Ron, Ron, my Ron, man Ron, Ronald, Ron, always Ron, coming through, Ron, 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 showing love, Ron, giving appreciation Ron, Ron, for the data Ron. and the information. Ron, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate all of the regular viewers of the show. Thank you so much, so much. And Ron also has a question today. He's saying during the Q and A, can okay. you suggest a community in the DMV that is similar to Cascade High? Oh, uh, look at Ron! Ron talking about my hometown, the, the A. A, the A, and Heath, so uh, coincidentally, Heath is an original member. I am an OG from Cascade. Yes, original, not from the outskirts of Cascade. No, I grew up. Off my street, ran into Cascade Road in he, Southwest Atlanta. His parents were one of the first black families to move on to, uh, into the Cascade Heights area. Yeah, yeah. So that was like uh, in the 60s, they had this thing called white flight, right? And so it was a beautiful suburban situation, and black people started moving into the community, and then all of the white people started moving out, and the real estate agents were trying to kind of take advantage of that, and they were like, ooh, they're coming and so it was like a whole it was like a whole thing and then what happened was it evolved into this beautiful bastion of black intelligentsia all located in this one particular area of Atlanta and that's where I grew up so it was a beautiful upbringing right my neighbors were Andrew Young Jesse Hill Mayor Maynard Jackson Hank Aaron uh, Ralph Abernathy we had all of these um, um, people that I went to high school with their children and uh uh you know one street over two streets over around the corner so i mean there were probably some people said there were probably like uh, uh 15 or 20 black millionaires that lived in that area when i was growing up which was just like an amazing thing right in the 70s or 80s is much different than than today so so yeah so cascade heights was just a it's a it's a beautiful place and it continues to be uh, a beautiful place and so i think what ron is really looking for is uh, what, are, what are some areas that are like that in, right. in, Metro, in, DC, in Metro DC? Right, where are, are are black people really proliferating? Are there concentrations yep, of there are. Uh, people that are doing really cool things? Doctors, lawyers, business owners, school teachers, principals, um, tech workers, all uh, this bastion of of just uh, uh, excellence. And so, one of those places. It's actually two places we're going to give you. Okay. So what's the first one we're going to give them we're to? We're going to give them Mitchellville, Mitchellville, Maryland. Mitchellville, right? So this is Prince George's County, right? We have friends that live in Mitchellville. It's a beautiful area. Upper class, mm -hmm. upper class majority, oh, yes. African American. It's don't, unincorporated. Don't get it twisted. And it's in PG <laughs> County, guys. Right, right. Okay, um, let me see if I can. I'm trying to yeah, so share here. So check out Mitchellville. Um, Kettering is in that area, right? All of these, Did um, that work? all of this is in Prince George's County. Are you, I don't what? Think that work. What do you mean? Are, are they seeing the screen? What are you guys saying? Are you just seeing me and Tracy? No, that's are you okay. Saying, okay, I'll that's go back cool. to it. Okay, that's cool. No worries. And so, uh, so yeah, Mitchellville is dope. Uh, we've been to Mitchellville um, multiple times. We have friends that live out there. As uh, uh, the census is saying, there are about three thousand households in Mitchellville. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. um, it's mostly black. Mm -hmm. It's about mostly, mostly black. It's yeah. only about um, fourteen, thirteen percent white, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's uh, about eighty. 80 90 percent black yeah yeah um the homes out there i'm going to try to give you an idea of the homes out there keep talking about uh, yeah. your friends that live out there mm -hmm. yeah so i mean to, to trace's point it is certainly uh, uh an upper middle class neighborhood i mean you're going to have some some sizable homes out there lots of professionals right people doing really cool things judges lawyers doctors yeah. entrepreneurs tech workers, uh, uh, you know, it runs the gamut out there in terms of government contractors, right? People that own contracting businesses. And so uh, so there's there's a plethora of kind of upper echelon folks out there. Mm -hmm. And then by the same token, you can still probably find some affordable, quote, quote, affordable properties uh, in the community. And so uh, uh, I think a house is going to be a house is going to be about five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got to probably get a townhouse for around mm -hmm. um, uh, four 
between three and four mm -hmm. and um an apartment they have condos in mitchell mitchellville mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're about 250 200 yeah yeah. Um, but there's a country club out that way. Also, mm -hmm. it's really, really nice. Yeah, uh, our friends live in the country club. It starts with a W. Hold on. Yeah. We'll try to get that information for you. But um, I think the point that, that Ron is looking for is, hey, where are some neighborhoods like that? Where are some communities like that that give you some reminders of what it's like yeah. in Cascade in Atlanta? Yeah. And so Mitchellville certainly is one of those that you want to check out, Ron. So in and around Mitchellville, yeah. definitely check that out. So uh, Mitchellville, Kettering, and uh, uh, some some areas that are all right there. Yeah, so Mitchellville and Bowie. That's the other place. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Bowie, Maryland is another place that you're going to find a lot of people that look like us that are doing it. Mm -hmm. okay. Shot to Bowie. Yeah, my sister has um, her, one of her best girlfriends lives out in Bowie. Been out there for decades. Uh, Bowie State University is also out there, right? And so that makes sense that you have uh, um, an excellent HBCU that's also in that general Bowie area. State. So a lot of people end up kind of staying in that area as well. So uh, uh, Bowie, Bowie, Maryland certainly falls into that category. Also, um, another place I think is kind of changing, mm -hmm. um, becoming more. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Pimmett Hills. Mm -hmm. It's near Tyson's Corner. Oh, P -I -M -M -I look at Tracy Pimmett coming with the, with the data points. Tyson's Corner area, mm -hmm. not too far from us. And another area that's not too far from us is Falls Church. Yep. A lot of us live in Falls Church. Mm -hmm. Not quite like Cascade. Bowie and Mitchellville are more like Cascade. Right, right, right. But if you want to be on the curve of it, it, it would be Falls Church and Pimmett Hills. Yeah, check it out. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Appreciate the question, Ron. Appreciate the super chat as always. Oh, too. thanks for saying the flowers are beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you, Smith. Appreciate you. I'm doing, um, going to this excellent effort out here. Yeah, Heath is originally from the ATL, y'all. Yes, yes, ma'am. I am uh, the closest to a Grady baby as you can get, right? So, yep. uh, you know, I was brought to Atlanta when I was three or four days old, and uh, but I grew up there and uh, spent my first 18 years in the A, grew up in Cascade, and then when Tracy and I moved back after our stint at Howard, we settled in the south, in the southern part of the metro area, so we were down in Fayette County. So we lived in uh, Fayette. Our first house was in the hood. Our first house was in the hood, yes. Adam, what was it? Adams Drive? No, no, what no, was, no. What was the name Anderson of the street? Anderson Avenue. Anderson Avenue, <laughs> y'all. We had this <laughs> We had this little house on Anderson Avenue. Uh, so, yeah, so we we lived on uh, Anderson Avenue, but after uh, we moved back the second time, we lived in uh, Fayette County. So we lived in Fayetteville. We lived in Peachtree City, and uh, and that's where we lived until we moved to North Carolina. Yep. Yes, you can rent in Mitchellville. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. yeah, they definitely have rental property yeah. there. Um, and then the thing, of course, about uh, just quick. just as we uh, just as we talk about with any of the areas, right, is just all about where you want to be, what what it is that you want to accomplish, and how you're designing your life. So in Mitchellville, you know, if you need to go into the city, just keep in mind that you have to deal with the bridge. Uh, occasionally, but if what you're doing is going to be done in in that area and around that area, then it's it's fa fantastic. Great, right, great people out there. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Ron, thank you, thank you, Ron. You got it, Ron. We, we when you move to the area, Ron, we gonna have to hook up. Anytime, Ron. Yeah, got you, got you, dude. And and y'all, we are working on finding a venue to have a meet up in the fall. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, we're gonna have cocktails on Friday evening, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a half a day event with um, locals that live here and a great event happening where you can meet us in person and talk to us in person and meet each other um, on Saturday and then go on your own during Saturday. We'll give you places to go and places to check out. And then Sunday, if you're still in town, we'll meet for brunch. Look, let me tell y'all something. Queen Tracy I'm knows so excited. how to put it's down gonna an event. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I mean, I'm we, good at this. When we have a get-together at the house, it's dope. So the events, y'all. Let me tell you, Queen Tracy used to plan national events. Yeah. For certain organizations, right? Yeah. And we have had uh, uh, many a party and gathering. What do they call them? Sets. And uh, what does they call them? Kickbacks. Kickbacks. We've That's what it's gonna be like, guys. <laughs> it's just gonna be really, really casual and really, we've, really cool. We've had many of them over the years. And so, All right. So Tracy know how to do it. Trust so, me. so we went. Uh, remember we said we were trying to get out more since the weather's improving. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we went to the Georgetown waterfront. Yeah, we we kicked it last week. So uh, was that was that after the show? Or was that Sunday? I think that was Sunday. I don't remember. 
Yeah, I think it was Sunday. Last Sunday, we went down. It was a beautiful day oh, in it's D.C. Oh, it was gorgeous. Yeah, because it was kind of we- weird last Saturday. Yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful yeah. day. Uh, the sun was out. It was hot. People were moving around. People were out on their boats. Wait, let me show them. People were on the Hold pier. On. There we go. Y'all see us kicking it? Look. Can they hear us? I don't know. They can hear us, I think, yeah, baby. We told you guys we'd show you some different places that we kind of mm-hmm. hang out. Tracy like, look good, don't she? Doing on the weekends so and evenings. <laughs> And the first place we're going to show you good, is baby. the Georgetown You're so Waterfront. sweet, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's several mm-hmm. restaurants out here. It's a real vibe. Yes. We're just going to show you pictures from here. We've hung out here a couple times. Oh, yes. Quite a bit. <laughs> Restaurants like Sequoia, Nick's Riverside Grill, mm-hmm. Tony and Joe's, uh, Filo uh, Mare. <laughs> Filo Mare. Filo Mare. Just kind of a vibe. Hang Couldn't in. get in, though. Couldn't get in. Sorry. Yeah, we couldn't get in because you have to have a reservation. Oh, you need the resi in uh, D.C. Yeah, yeah, you need the reservation. Yeah, post panorama, you know, you got to have your reservations. Yeah, you need your reservations. The bar was great. The people were really cool. Yep. Let me tell you something, y'all. The people that don't look like us here. Mm-hmm. Everybody's they, cool. Everybody's so freaking cool. Yep. So cool. We had a conversation with a gentleman sitting next to us. Mm-hmm. You can pull your boat right up to the dock. Yep. And jump out and go have lunch. It's yeah. really cool. Really cool area. Nice mix of people there. So this is like essentially Georgetown where we were. It is Georgetown. We yeah. were in Georgetown and then you go walk, you, you park down at the waterfront. So this isn't the main walking street on Georgetown. It's the waterfront. Yeah. And they've really built it up and they renovated it and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really cool place to be. Really cool place to be. Yeah. And the, the water taxis uh, that will pull up, they, they have like uh, water, ta- not water taxis, um, like uh, view, uh, um, what do you call them? Um, tours, right? So you can actually get a boat and you can pull up to this area where we were. Yeah. And then it goes to like the wharf where some other uh, new restaurants. And, yeah, uh, it's, another she said, well, are. that's the last place that you can get a, uh, be on a boat mm-hmm. um, on the Potomac because after that, the falls happen. Right, right, right. You don't want to go that way. Yeah. So... That's so the we last were on the, stop. Like the, was the north end, I guess. Yeah, we're on the, like the north of Pot- north north end of Potomac. So then there's uh, where the Ferris wheel is mm-hmm. and everything. Then you have Mount Vernon. Well, first you have Mount Vernon. Then you have where the Ferris wheel is. Then you have Alexandria's waterfront. Mm-hmm. We'll probably go do that for you. Is the weather going to be nice tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, we'll go check out the Alexandria waterfront for you guys tomorrow. That mm-hmm. is just as popping mm-hmm. too. And then we'll um, then you so you hit Mount Vernon, which. We don't care about. It's okay, babe. No, I. I anyway, <laughs> um, you, then you hit you the. No Mount Vernon. I'm hating on Mount Vernon. Why? What do you mean? Uh, why am I hating on Mount no, Vernon? No, I'm just saying. This is just. It's, mm. it's a place. Yeah, it's a place. <laughs> it's a horrible place. So you, then you go to Oxen Hill. Mm-hmm. I call it Oxen Hill. It used to be Oxen Hill. Oxen Hill, Merlin. But now it's where the. Um, where the casino is. The casino, yep. there's, it's really cool. It's a cool little area town mm-hmm. too. That's where MGM C- Casino. Yeah, they redid all of and that. And the, um, the big beautiful hotel. Ah, ooh, fr- the brain fart. The Gaylord. The Gaylord is mm-hmm. absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. That sits on the water, and the Ferris wheel sits on the water. Yep. That's a cool area too. We'll check that out for you. Mm-hmm. And then you hit Alexandria. Mm-hmm. Then you hit the wharf. Yep. The wharf area. That's more touristy to me. Mm-hmm. The the wharf is more touristy. Yeah, the wharf is dope. It's new. But it's, it's a like, lot of newer construction down yeah. there. The restaurants are cool, and uh, and right it it kind of dovetails into the navy yard and that whole piece. It's near all the monuments and, then, and everything, so it's real touristy over there. Yeah, it's and a then the vibe. Uh, where the the baseball stadium is over there as well. No, where no, the no, Washington that's the National. other one. That's the newer one. What is the most? So you. I, well, I will get you a map next weekend, y'all. So the I can waterfront. Show you. The waterfronts. There's a lot of different waterfronts, and they're building another one. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Well, we used to go down and get the crabs. Oh, Ron and said stuff. that was a nice hat, baby. Okay, I appreciate you, Ron. Yeah, Where did you get that? Do you remember where you got that hat? From? I got that hat um, at the store. He can't remember. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. So sorry, I asked. No, I got so that hat. Sorry. Uh, let me think. Let me think where I got that hat. I uh, got that hat. I know it's uh, so nice here. Was it Nordstrom? It's so nice. Yeah, I think it was Nordstrom. Nordstrom probably, yeah. right? Yeah, he goes mm-hmm. and puts hats on and puts them in the cart. That's how he does it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's All dope. Right. It's dope, Libby. Absolutely. It's um, it's even more beautiful than it was when we lived here before. Absolutely. So the other thing was this. And then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so remember how we told you how um, DC has these cameras? Oops. Sorry, DC babe. has these uh 
I can't move it. You can take DC, it down. Just I, take it down. Just take it down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. DC has these cameras. It's DC residents not happy with city's response to stop sign camera complaints. So, like, over the last few years when Trace and I were living in North Carolina, I would have to come to DC on business. Sometimes Trace and I would come here to check on the girls or to do something with our daughters. Uh, we, But we've been in DC frequently over the last few Can years. You, yeah. And what would happen is uh, I would get these these beautiful. We would get back home. I w- we would get back home to North Carolina, and we would get these thank you notes in the mail. And, That's what I call them. And I would be like, what? "Heath, you got another thank you note?" I'd be like, "What is this?" It's a thank you note. I'm like, "How uh, how am I gonna get a ticket and, and a cop nowhere around?" He couldn't stand it, y'all. He was like, "Uh uh-uh, uh, this ain't a real ticket." I'm like, "This, this is ain't a, t- a real ticket." I ain't paying this ticket. He would say that. <laughs> this your uncle said. Your uncle did that too. He he takes them and sticks them in the. He said, "Man, them people, man, they they trying to." No, I ain't paying it. <laughs> So in in certain parts of Washington D.C., they want to keep the uh, the speed down on on the street. It's right? a walkable city. In it's uh, a lot Maryland, of walking. in like some on the edge of Maryland too, they have those. Uh, but at oh, any they rate, do. oh yeah, the, yeah, they do. But the point is, is that there there are certain parts of Washington D.C. where the speed limit is it comes down to like twenty five. When Trace and I lived here before, the speed limit was twenty five miles per hour unless otherwise posted. And yeah. now I think the speed limit in Washington D.C. proper is thirty. No, 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 no. Don't listen to that, y'all. Don't no? listen. To, it's twenty-five. It's, yeah, in many and places, in some places, city. it's lower. Yeah, I think officially though it's they're thirty trying unless to take, posted. Well, no. And so there are a lot of signs in D.C. that say that say twenty-five. No, it's anyway, twenty-five. So the do point, not go over twenty-five when you come to D.C. And when you see a sign that says camera, what, what does it say? Camera. Camera oh, ticket, uh, camera, camera ahead. I don't know. I listened to the GPS camera, camera, <laughs> uh, camera ahead. That's what she says. So the point is, is that if you are going, uh, if you're exceeding the speed limit too much, um, typically I, my rule of thumb is 10 miles an hour. No, but when I'm in no, DC, no, 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 no. but when I'm in DC, I, I just like stay right yeah, around the speed limit. Right and that way speed. I don't have to worry about it. They make so much money off of these cameras, y'all. But when you are, if you're on a surface street in D.C. and the speed limit is 25 and you're rolling through there at 40 and you don't feel like you're really going that fast and you get the bloop, bloop. So that was for speeding. This is new. <laughs> this is new. This is for stop signs. Yeah. So this is like in uh, Petworth. It's like right above there. Yeah, Upper, Upper Georgia, Georgia Avenue. Yeah. Remember we talked about Upper Georgia Avenue, how it's really, really changing. They're trying what, what they're doing is they're trying to control the traffic in that area now. The rest of the traffic in town is kind of controlled. You can kind of feel it when you're driving around town. It's pretty slow. So there's a stop sign over there. that They, they, they said D.C. has made 3.5 million. Wait, wait, wait. Mi- what? It's one stop sign? It's one stop sign. <gasps> $3.5 million D.C. has made <laughs> over this stop sign. So I need to know what that, that people stop doing rolling is. stops, I guess. And then one lady was like, "Yo, I I stopped at the stop sign, and I always stop at the stop sign." But uh, apparently, I guess when she stops, like her tires are like halfway into the crosswalk, and so she get a ticket anyway. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I won't be going to that stop sign. I need to know where that stop sign uh, is. It's in the article. It's a, it says where it is. Okay, I need to I need to go. So the and mor- see that one. The moral of the story is. Uh, stay around the speed that when you're in D.C. Mm. There you go. Mm-mm. If you like anything you're hearing today, hit that subscribe and like button. Yeah, hit the like button. Whether you're watching the on the like live button. or the, the replay, like we appreciate the likes. It helps us. It helps the algorithm. It helps the video get out there. And so we appreciate y'all. Oh, boy. Let's get. Do we have any more questions? Y'all ain't got no questions you for us today. You want some? Go ahead and jump into your little thing. See if we got any questions, babe. It's the time of the show. When Tracy and I are diving deep, this just tickles me y'all. into the questions that might steep, like Tracy's tea, or Heath and Tracy, you see, where we are engaging with the audience to see if there are additional questions for you and me. That was off the dome. That was pretty good, right? That was, that was. I usually do it off the dome. That was. I haven't prepared. That I haven't was prepared these soliloquies that for, for our audience. So I mean, you know. Oh yeah, Andrew had a question. Thank you, right. Andrew. Go back to the top. Go back to the top. Andrew says, "What's up, Andrew? Hi, What's up, Andrew? Welcome, What's welcome. Up, welcome. Andrew? I'm a recent listener, and I love you guys. We love you too. We love you too. I got a job working for the federal government, but I'm in Florida. 
I'm Florida planning man. to move from Florida after COVID okay. next year. I love it. I love it. Yay. Congratulations. That's what's up, Andrew. Woo. I got to do the real applause on that one, Andrew. 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 Look, we love it, man. So, um, yeah, all the three-letter agencies are here, right? And so, <clears throat> very government-centric around uh, the DMV and D.C. in particular, right? And so, I think that, you know, you'll feel very much at home in terms of uh, your tribe and people who will be engaging with you, just the vibe of the city, what's happening, right? So, whether you're living in the, whether you're going to move to the city proper or to one of the, the suburbs around the city, whatever it makes the most sense for you. Uh, I think that you'll really love it. So so his question is, any suggestions if I should rent or mm-hmm, buy? Mm-hmm. And where is the best place to live to be close to Washington, D.C., taking the metro? I have a wife. Mm-hmm. I have a family. And okay. two daughters. Love it. Love it, Andrew. Uh, number one, I would suggest to go back and check out a lot of the lives that we've done over the last uh, few months. And you'll see us highlighting a number of specific cities and areas around town. Uh, with respect to Metro, I would I would advise uh, getting the map, looking at the stops, and then matching that with some of the areas that you're thinking about uh, as it relates to renting or buying. I think that I think that right now, with the way the real estate market is nationally, as well as in Metro DC, I, I, I w- I'm an advocate of renting. And so now, you know, if buying is a goal and that's something that you want to accomplish, then uh, my suggestion would be to rent for a year or two. Figure out where you want to live. Or even three. Get your kind of vibe of where you want to be in the city, what you really enjoy, what your budget is going to be, how you want to deal with commute, uh, schools for your daughters, all of those things that come into play. And then, uh, and then pull the trigger on something uh, in a couple three years. So that's what that would be my advice. It's it's really expensive in city right now. It's mm-hmm. really expensive all the way around. Although uh, our next story is the prices are coming down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I did I get these little alerts um, when things are happening in the real estate market. Alert and, alert. And um, what's happening right now is people are dropping it. They, they've been too high. And what you want to do right now, you're going to move about a year, which is cool. Which I think you'll you'll have a better mm-hmm. it'll be a better mm-hmm. market a year from now if you want to buy at that time we don't advocate moving straight into an area and mm-hmm. buying you don't know where you want to live you don't know the vibe you don't know exactly how it feels mm-hmm. so we recommend renting at least for a year mm-hmm. six months at least especially where, where inventory is right now and especially when you have kids and everything because you want to get somewhere where you're solid mm-hmm. when we moved from Atlanta where we've been for 20 years to North Carolina which we've never really been into Mm -hmm. we rented we rented because we were like we don't even know we don't even know we just knew we wanted to be near work right so if you want to what you have to figure out what's most important to you is the commute important when we moved here from north carolina it was important for heath's commute not to be crazy yep because if you get to the outer areas of dc Mm -hmm. your commute is going to be at least an hour Mm -hmm. um and it's it's moving traffic but it's going to be an hour yeah okay um it but for a family type situation and school type of situation focus in on that too look at where the schools are but i do recommend renting and renting homes here Mm -hmm. when you live closer in more people rent Mm -hmm. than purchase here right the only place they purchase is in the suburbs Mm -hmm. the outer areas you know that we've talked about the only places but i understand what you're saying so Technically, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we live in Arlington. Yeah, the majority of people in Arlington rent. The majority of people in Arlington rent Mm -hmm. their homes. So there are a lot of homes, a lot of single family homes that you can rent. So Mm -hmm. we suggest that you do that. Yes. Just for a little while. If you really want to buy something, that gives you a chance to figure out where you want to buy. You can go and look and see and where you like to hang out, where your friends live, where your coworkers live and, and just get the vibe first and then buy a house. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's kind of where, uh, where we are on that. Was that plus one, plus one to all the things that Tracy said. Yeah. And the better, the better school districts. And we don't know the ages of the daughters though. Yeah. We Mm -hmm. don't know the ages of your daughters, but if they're, if they're of school age, definitely, definitely Mm -hmm. like put the emphasis on that because Mm -hmm. private school is major here. Yeah. Private school with all of our friends, none of their kids went to public school ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know why we weren't living here when our children were school age, but the thing about schools here is you can find good schools here, but you have to be able to live in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to be able to live in that area. Let's see where we are. Mm-hmm. Scroll slower, baby. Baby, I, we already went through this. Oh, okay, Charmaine. Hi, Charmaine. What's up, Charmaine? How you doing? 
Good to see you, dear. What do you think about Ellicott City? Okay, so Ellicott City. That's near Baltimore, right? Yeah, it's here. It is. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna show you right here. Yeah. So it's um. Go ahead, babe. Put this down. Okay, okay. It's in Howard County, right? It's in Howard County, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Ellicott City is up and coming because it's one of the more affordable places. It's right outside of Columbia. I think we did um, a show on, yeah, Columbia. We did a piece on Columbia. Yeah, yep. it's right outside mm -hmm. of Columbia, so it's not as expensive as Columbia. I think it's a little closer to Baltimore. It is. It? Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit closer to Baltimore, mm -hmm. but it is up and coming. Yeah, it's it nice. just depends on how far you want to be from the center. Yeah. And what we're finding is after the panorama has ended, people are kind of making their move back this way. Mm -hmm. Everywhere mm -hmm. we've been, it's been very, very busy. But I can tell you something. When we were sitting at the bar um, uh, last weekend mm -hmm. at on the waterfront, yep. people were talking about different places they go outside. Of, there's a lot going on outside of it's D.C. to you guys. It, it's not boring mm -hmm. outside of D.C. So yep. Ellicott City sounds great. And the other th cool thing about living here is we're near the water. Yep. So if you are somewhere near the water, there's always something going on in different areas. Just because you're not in the middle of D.C. doesn't mean it's going to be boring like a lot of other places that you live. Yeah, I mean, between D.C. and uh, Metro D.C. and Metro Maryland, I'm sorry, Metro DMV and Metro Baltimore, mm -hmm. it's 10 million people. Okay. Right, and so when you when you talk about that amount of people and the uh, the array of things that you can do, you can imagine that people are moving around and going a lot of different directions. Okay, yeah, and, and when you get ready to move here, go to those places. Don't just go see your friends. When we came here, I don't even think we we saw our friends, did we? When we came here to look for a house. Not I, don't the first think, time. I don't think we even saw our friends. We have a lot of friends here. Yep. We came here and we looked at places we wanted to live. We walked around the area and everything. So I think it's great that you are looking at different areas and mm -hmm. I just I just I love that. I love that. That means you're opening your mind to mm -hmm. where you can live here and how you can be a part of this community. Yes. Yes. Let's see, Ron's got another question. Has gentrification positively or negatively affected blacks in D.C.? Well, that's a great question, Ron. I think um, so. I have up the top of my head, I have a couple of opinions about that. So one, I think that the DMV is good for black people regardless of how gentrification is impacting. Right. And so I think that it, it, it's a, it becomes a mindset piece. Right. Is like. Um, uh, people of other persuasions that are moving into the cities or moving into a certain community, uh, they're looking for the same things that you're looking for, right? At the end of the day, they want a sense of community. They want uh, uh, relative safety. They want to uh, grow with the area and all of those things uh, that are positive around themselves and their families. That's what they want. So I think that's what the, that's what we all want uh, at our core, right? And so I think, uh, but uh, in some ways, right, when we like to live in these kind of homogenous scenarios, then there's certainly a place for that too, right? And if that's what you're looking for, that that's what you need. I mean, there's still uh, communities that exist that way. And so, I, from, my from my question would from, be from my, my perspective, I, I think I think that it's uh, as we say, it's not what happens; it's how you think about what happens. And so gentrification is happening and gentrification will continue to happen. It's going to continue to happen. And so, uh, th so that's my take. Now, having said that, we have some great examples like uh, what's happening around Howard, right? And, and, mm. and the way that Tracy and I and so many in the uh, Howard family hold up the institution and the university and the sacred ground that is the, the yard or the long walk, as they call it, the, the, the kind of people that have come through there, how they've impacted the, the United States and the world at large. I mean, we really hold the campus in, in very high esteem. And so when you have this kind of gentrification scenario that's happening around Howard, and all of a sudden you see people walking, walking their, dogs their dogs in the yard it's and they're doing deal. these kind of things and uh, jogging through it, it's sort of like you know this is a safe space this is not mm -hmm. what this is for this is not a park oh when they get the business don't get it twisted right they right. get the business but the point is that's an example of of, of, of maybe a negative effect of, of gentrification i don't, I, don't th I think there's more negativity mm. i i i'm in a disagreement with heath a little bit on this <sighs> that's nothing new that's normal for us <laughs> um i think it I think it's positive and negative. Mm -hmm. I think the negative portion is that they are basically sometimes stealing homes mm -hmm. from from people that look like us. Mm -hmm. um, you have to remember in DC, so many of us owned the property. Mm -hmm. 
we own the property. It's not like places in New York and in you know Chicago, different places or Baltimore where the property was not owned mm-hmm. um, by the people that lived here. Here, the people own the property. Mm-hmm. So the positive aspect of that is they they're seeing their their um, property values increase, but in turn, their taxes increase. Right. And um, things that are happening in the neighborhood that they don't agree with that's increasing. More policing. Um, neighbors who aren't really trying to, um, you know, figure out what they're doing and become a part of the community, but neighbors that are coming in and changing their communities. Um, But the thing that we need to remember, like he said, it's a mindset. It's happening. It's going to happen. Uh, Gentrification has been good for D.C. Uh, I think for some people of color, it has been good. It has not displaced uh, in the way it has in other cities. Uh, We talked about, uh, what was it? Not Columbia Heights, but the area. Oh, gosh. I'm I'm talking about in the city, baby? Yeah. uh, It's a little little part of the area over by Columbia Heights. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it. We even did a whole uh, show on it. Not Columbia Heights, you're talking about? No. um, But I can't remember the name. What were you trying to say about it, though? But it's it's still the same. Mm -hmm. It's still owned by the same people people but it's it their values have increased mm-hmm. and they've just become more of a community yeah. um gosh it's i can't it's fine, remember it's, it's no fine. it's bothering me it's fine. but i think the important thing to remember is that mm-hmm. because of all this the the city's uh visibility is increasing so right. that means more money is flowing into the city mm-hmm. so that means that it's going to lift everyone up uh when they were trying to build a new hospital on the other side of the river, southeast, and then we've told you those people have been kind of separated from the city for so long mm-hmm. that uh, they picked George, uh, what was it, George Washington University yep. to run the hospital mm-hmm. over there. And Howard University walked in, they said, oh, no, no, no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why would you pick that hospital mm-hmm. who has not been serving our community right. to serve this community? Mm-hmm. And let me tell you what happened. Yep. D.C. is building Howard University, a brand new hospital yeah, to president, serve our people. Shout out to President Frederick. He, he was, he was, very he was in, whole I mean, scenario. it was a whole campaign, a whole yep. nationwide campaign of no, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And because what happens in that situation is the doctors that are training in a hospital no longer look like us mm-hmm. because it's George Washington University. Mm-hmm or the majority, I should say. Yeah. So that's a problem. Where are the doctors that are training in training that look like us are right. going to train? Yeah, it has a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect. Yeah. So so doc, Dr. Frederick did a, a very eloquent job framing that argument and yeah. making people understand that this was not just a local D.C. issue, that this was impacting yeah, the United the States. Yeah, the nation. Because yeah. so many black doctors are trained at Howard. And so it was. Uh, it was. It was really an amazing. Another thing, to see. thing I would say is good is you see the Frederick Memorial, Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge being built. It's yep. it'll be, It's it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And it's going to have a park on it, and it's connecting Southeast DC, which is still, you know, it's still not a place you want to be. Okay, as a poor black person. It's connecting it to the rest of D.C. and rest of all the good things going on in the district. Yeah. So it's also in, changing. In, in that way, mm-hmm. uh, it's not, uh, in that way, mm-hmm. I see good happening for the people that live in this ta- in this area. Yeah. Um, my daughter mentors a little girl and I was shocked mm-hmm. when she said this this little seven year old, eight year old little girl had never been to see any of the monuments Mm -hmm. and she lives in Southeast DC, literally two miles away. And that just tells you where the mindset is Mm -hmm. and where, how they feel so limited to those few blocks. So to me, it's been a little bit of both. They've been taking their houses on the sly, Mm -hmm. but not as much because you got aunts and uncles and cousins that are like, no, that's not happening. And we've owned most of our property here. I think that's what I said in, in a nutshell. Baby. Well, we that kind of agree in, then. It's positive in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, Knowledge Humanity. What's Welcome up? to the show. What's what up, are those knowledge? gas price looking like? <laughs> so gas prices here are a little bit higher than you're going to see. It's, it's yeah. going to vary from mm-hmm. Maryland, D.C. to Virginia. Mm-hmm. It depends on how far out. So basically, the further out from D.C. you go, mm-hmm. the, the lower the price is going to get. But check this out. Mm-hmm. I don't drive that far. Right, right. I just don't drive that far. Mm-hmm. Even when I take, if I take my son to work, if I 
go in the city to meet my girlfriend for lunch. Yeah. It's just not that far. The mm-hmm. most I'll drive in a day is maybe 10 miles. Yeah, that's uh, and, and that g- really goes to the designing your life piece. Yeah, it does. Uh, my man knowledge. And so from that perspective, right, if you're designing your life and you're doing your business and you kind of have your, your bubble and how you're conducting yourself and, your ser- and, right. and accessing your services and dealing with work and that kind of thing, then you know it, you don't have to really drive that far, right? So juxtaposition of living in Atlanta, let's say, Ooh. right, where everything is forty minutes, right? Yeah, gas hey, cheaper. I'm over here. You, you and you and the SWATs, and you know your friends out on the east side, and you got some other friends in Alpharetta, and then you know your homie is down in uh, Fayetteville. Oh my gosh, you I mean, need a whole you, tank. You you burning gas left and right, up it's and down. It's just not like that here. So it's a bit different here, just depending on where you are and where you're going. But uh, but yes, gas gas has been high. My son said he's seen some, you know, when they had like the whole when the crunch, the whole colon- pipeline, it was like seven dollars in line. DC. He said he, he said it touched seven dollars at uh, one one place that yeah. he, that he uh, filled up in. And then I think the highest I paid in Virginia at that time was like five. No, no, no. It was the yeah, highest I paid. And that was for premium. Yeah, we too. do premium. Mm-hmm. So the highest I paid during that that high gas time mm-hmm. in Virginia near my home was mm-hmm. like three fifty. Yeah, yeah. But in the city, it was creeping around five dollars. Mm-hmm. But if you go out to Loudoun County or Falls mm-hmm. Church or Woodbridge, it's going to be closer to three. Yeah. So that just gives you an idea. It depends on it depends on where you live, how they do that. It's all marketing. It's all what it's supply and demand. Yeah. I don't need that much gas. I don't fill up every week. I fill up every other week, maybe. Yeah, but we're not. You're not going to an office and that kind of thing every but day. But even if I go to an office every day, it's just not that much. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Care 007. What's up? What's late, up, Care? Late, better, it's all good. We love you. Happy to hang with you this shout, morning. One of the shout, regulars, guys. One of the, the regulars. Reg- shout to the you regulars. You are so welcome, Andrew. Welcome to the show down, and Andrew. thanks for joining us. Yeah, swing by anytime. Yes, knowledge you meant. Definitely rent mm-hmm. before buying Try. especially when you're spending this much money mm-hmm. especially when you're where you're spending this much money yeah courtney stewart good morning courtney i love you too we love you both my young daughter and i are moving to the dmv from norfolk for mm-hmm. a government job more of that that's, that's thank happening. you for your insight i'm leaning toward arlington mm-hmm. because of the schools smart. you're so smart smart courtney so the thing about living in the D.C. area is, like mm-hmm. we said, all of our friends who live here, they don't live in Arlington. Their mm-hmm. kids go to private schools. Mm-hmm. Arlington has some of the best schools mm-hmm. in the area. No doubt, no doubt. Public schools. Right. I should say that. Public schools. If you live just about anywhere else, y'all, mm-hmm. you going to have to do private school. But we have shown uh, some of the some of the better public schools yeah, in, you some, can of find live, them. in yeah, some of you our can live in some of our live videos. Them. So if you want to go back and check out some of the areas that we've highlighted and uh, we've given some uh, a lot of data around the schools and so you can you can plan right in the spirit of designing your life you can plan to be in those various districts where the schools are better. Do your homework, do your research, check it out. Yeah. Reality Doll. Good morning. What's up, Reality, Reality Doll? Doll? Welcome What's to up? the show. Welcome, Welcome back. to the show. Welcome back. Knowledge Humanity. Also, mm-hmm. how do you guys feel about townhouses over houses? Look, look. Let me tell you. We lived in a townhouse with six people. <laughs> it was a four bedroom. What was it? A four, three and a half? It was a, yeah, it was a four, it was three, a four and a three and a half. Four, three and a half. We had uh, two elementary. Two, we had two in elementary two school. Two in elementary school, one in middle one school. One in middle school and one uh, going college. back and forth to college. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was tight, but it worked, right? And so, just depending on where you are in your life, what you need, what you're doing, uh, you know, townhouses can be fifteen hundred square feet. Yeah, they can be six thousand square feet. So that's that's one piece. Yeah, and here then, in DC, you can get you a real townhouse. <laughs> yeah, and then the other piece of that is uh, same thing with a row house. I mean, a row house essentially is a is a townhouse, right? So if you're in the city or in certain parts of the uh, surrounding areas. Uh, a, a row house uh, if you find like a whole row house by itself that can also be uh, be an option but yeah so just depending on uh, what, what you need and where you are and what the budget is you can do townhouse you can do single family it's all uh, it's all good okay so this is the thing y'all what's the thing baby I love a townhouse I love when it. when my so my dad played uh for the Washington football team back when, in the day back in the day mm-hmm. and we lived in Florida so we had a townhouse here shot to Lamar Pierce um so 
I, I have no problems with townhouses. We've lived in a townhouse. Mm -hmm. It's about what you want. It's mm -hmm. about how you want to live. The beauty of living in a townhouse is mm -hmm. you don't have to take care of the yard. Right, you right. don't have to take care of the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. It's included yep. in your rent or in your mortgage. Or your HOA or, or your it is. HOA. Mm -hmm. My um my great aunt mm -hmm. owned a beautiful townhome here in the town of Kettering, mm -hmm. which is in PG County. Yep. And it was gorgeous. She had like a lower level, she had an in unit and mm -hmm. she had a main level with a nice big ki each eat in kitchen. Mm -hmm. She had three bedrooms upstairs. Yep. It was really, really nice. Yeah. And my aunt just sold it. Mm -hmm. So uh I think that is a great, great fit if it's gonna fit your budget, if mm -hmm. it's gonna give you that lifestyle of not worrying about the outside of your home. I say townhome all the way. Mm -hmm. I say townhome all the way. Is that what you say, babe? I would. <laughs> I'm all about not worrying about stuff. Uh, oh, Andrew said his children are three and zero. So you don't have to worry about... Um, three and zero. <laughs> you don't have to worry about schools right now, but I will tell you uh -huh. the daycare situation. Yeah. Heath, give you some info, info on that. Yeah, I think, you know, Post Panorama, is, uh, it's, it's strange services, just like a, a number of other services, yeah. right? And so... If you're blessed enough to have uh, someone to take care of the kids or if your your wife, your, your lady is taking care of the kids, that's one piece. Um, but if you need to have uh, a daycare situation, I mean, that can be as expensive as college or private school too, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. I think um, – The waiting list for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you are, need to there get are, on the waiting list now. There are waiting lists Yeah. Uh, as it relates to that. So definitely do your homework, do a deep dive into uh, what, are, what those services look like. And then uh, another pro tip uh, that, that Trace and I have leveraged in the past is what is that school, what is that school district that those kids are going to go to when they get to be school age, right? And so maybe if you position yourself with your property in that school district, so say example, Arlington is what you decide that, hey, Arlington has these great public schools. I think that's going to be better than private schools. Right, so maybe right. maybe you find some place in Arlington that fits your budget, your lifestyle, the type of property you're looking for. And now you're set up for success as it relates to that. So now when the kids become school age, you're already there. You're already in the district. You're already engaged. You know the community. You know the services. You know the people. You know the teachers. And you just uh, uh, have a seamless transition. Okay, reality that last night I came across Frederick, Maryland. Oh, Any Frederick. thoughts on that area? Crime, neighborhoods within, diversity, culture, you get the point. <laughs> we get the point. So Frederick, Maryland is a good... It's a good little run idea. It's a good little it's run. It's about an hour out It's there. about an hour. I, was, I wanted to more. go look at some of them. There's some... There's some um, <laughs> I love antiquing. I don't like buying new furniture. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I hate buying new furniture, as a matter of fact. Um, I love buying um, consignment pieces and open. There are a lot of cool shops yep. in Frederick, Maryland like mm -hmm. that. It's very affordable in Frederick, Maryland. Yep. And the thing you have to keep in mind is pretty much everywhere around D.C. is going to be pretty diverse. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it's affordable. It's going to be very diverse. Mm -hmm. We we like that area up in there. It's just a little far for yeah. us. So, you know, think about your life mm -hmm. and think about your lifestyle yep. and think about what is going to be happening. Don't just live somewhere because it's cheaper to live there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but Frederick, Maryland is cool. They have a lot, they have a little cool downtown and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. we might have to go make a little trip out there and show them Frederick, Maryland. But I used to have a customer out there. I used to drive out there sometimes and this is a good little run out there. But what, one run. of the things that surprised me about Frederick is that they have like a mountain, you can see like mountains out there. I was like, yeah, my, you're out there. It's, it is out there. Look yeah. at the map. Pull it up. Look at the map. When, when you know, but what I like to do is type in um, directions. Mm -hmm. I go to the map on my phone. I put in directions. Yeah. And say, oh, do I want to go out there? Ooh, yeah. it's gonna be an hour and a half drive. No, I don't want to go today. Yeah, because you know, that's how you, I do if it. If you live in Frederick, and you need to get to DC. That traffic it's is gonna beast. be traffic because you come mode. down two seventy, yes. and it's just that one way. It's beast mode. It's either that one way, so it's mm -hmm. everybody's on two seventy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's nice out there. Yes, our audience is growing. <laughs> yes, tell your friends, tell everybody. Yay. <laughs> Care. We appreciate you. Oh, we thank you so much. That is so sweet. Y'all are so loving and so sweet. We appreciate you. Charmaine, you coming to town. Go on, get your, get your house on, on Charmaine. Okay, we ain't mad girl. At you. Okay, now she man has a question. Does mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. have a lot of nature environments? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Coming from Long Island, we have a lot of beaches and park. It's key for me. Yeah. The, this area, you are so, you're going to be so surprised. Yep, yep. Let me speak on that a little bit, right? So, with respect to that knowledge humanity, uh, I think 
a, a great uh, juxtaposition to look at is the, the decision that Amazon made when they were looking at their corporate headquarters situation, right? So a lot of you might remember a, a couple years ago when Amazon was, was saying, hey, we're going to have uh, another headquarters we're going to put up in some city. If you, you know, and so all of the cities were like, yeah, Amazon, come over here, come over here. And so at the end of the day, they decided to, instead of putting 50,000 jobs in one city, that they decided to divide it and put half of the jobs in a Long Island City and half of the jobs in Arlington, Virginia, right? And so you think about a company like Amazon, uh, $1.6 trillion valuation, lots of cash. They can do anything that they want anywhere in the world that they want, right? And they chose Long Island City. Yep. And they chose Arlington, Virginia. Hello. And so uh, uh, so that should be eye-opening for you because one of the things that they wanted to do was to really simulate what their – what the, the, the company had access to in, in Seattle, Seattle, right? Yeah. And so when you talk about these waterways and the lifestyle and all of these things that people can benefit from in Seattle, they were really looking to replicate that in, in another part of the country. And so uh, I think that there are lots of similarities to, to the point that Trace is making around yeah. uh, Metro D.C., that you have with respect to uh, uh, Long Island, right? So you've got the waterways, you've got the restaurants, you've got the parks, you've got these natural habitats, the Potomac River, the Anacostia River, the Washington, um, the all of the monuments uh, Rock connected Creek Park. to... Yeah, Rock Creek Park is another one that we don't talk about a lot. Uh, all the Smithsonian and everything is all free. Even the zoo is free for the children, right? Because it's part of the Smithsonian which is another pro tip, right, when you have children. So there are yeah. a myriad of things and activities that you can do that don't necessarily cost you money right. that really make the city enjoyable. And, and, and there are a number of things like uh, um, kayaking or other things that you can do So in it's city. so much here. It's bike trails. It's walking trails. It's amazing. It's gravel trails. Mm -hmm. It's not all, you know, hard concrete. There are so many parks. Uh, right across um, the the water from where we cross into D.C. all the time, it's called Chain Bridge. And people go down there and fish. It just fish for days. You, when we drive through there on the weekends, you see all the cars parked along the street and people walking with their fishing poles. Uh, check out uh, the Facebook group, Outdoor Afro DMV. Mm -hmm, Outdoor mm -hmm. Afro DMV. DMV. Yeah, they're not paying us I for follow, that song. Yeah, I follow them. Shout I love out. this because I'm I'm going to do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And they tell you the best places to go camping and the best place. There's so many. Oh, sorry about that. You got us all blurry, babe. <sighs> it's all right. Okay, there we go. There's so many. Um, there's so many places to camp. There's mm -hmm. some on beaches. Mm -hmm. We are close to oh, maybe five different beaches you can go to within an hour to two to three hours. Mm -hmm. So the outdoor scene here, we're on the coast, if you think about it. You've, mm -hmm. got, you've got Chesapeake Bay. You've got the Potomac River. Mm -hmm. It's just so much. It's just so much. Yep. All right, let's see. Oh, I was not thinking of Deanwood. I was thinking of Mount Pleasant, you Mount all. Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant is the bomb. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back you and look at... You got to circle back to your thought, baby. Pull it together for the people. Okay, so I was talking about... Um, I was talking about gentrification mm -hmm. and how it was affecting D.C. Okay. And Mount Pleasant is a great story, a great um, a great little area of inside D.C. Mm -hmm. that has not really been affected. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go back and you look at one of our older videos, we talked about Mount Pleasant mm -hmm. and how great of a community that is. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's say, do you guys know if Washington, D.C. medical hospitals are union based? That's a good question. Mm, that's an excellent question. Mm, if anybody in the chat knows, let knowledge humanity base. know. That's yeah. something my mother would actually know. She might know, she yeah. might know mm -hmm. that. Uh, I don't know. I do know that they are very good around here. They're very mm -hmm. successful. And the people that I know that work in healthcare here are very happy. Yeah. So I don't know if that if they have unions or not. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Good question. Because though. you have to remember, we're in Virginia and we're in Maryland and mm -hmm. we're still in the South. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure about that. Hello, Crow. My man. What's good? What's good? What's good? Everything I right in uh, Metro Raleigh. Thank you, Ron. You are you are appreciated. Shout Any out! Shout out to Ron. Okay, here we go. Uh, wow, I love that ten mile radius. Do you offer coaching on designing your life? Amazingly, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> hit us up. Hit us up in the link. Trace, Trace will make sure we get that link on the. Uh, in yeah, the, uh, in, the in the description. You can go description back to below. any of our older videos. You'll see the link in description yep. for appointments with us. Yep. 
Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Reality doll. Mm -hmm. Are townhouses or row houses noisy? Mm -hmm. Sorry, not that familiar with row houses. Okay. Are they that different from townhouses? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on purchasing a townhouse upon arrival? Yeah, so a couple things there. One, in the city, in D.C. proper, They're right? Separate. That's kind of the traditional name for a townhouse, essentially. It's, it's a row house, yeah. right? And so on the block, all of the houses uh, have a shared wall, except the ones that are on the end, much like a townhouse scenario, right? They don't have shared walls. In the... Oh, yeah, yeah, because there's a firewall between they're, them. They're right. single-family homes that are attached. Yeah. So the old D.C. row houses. Break it down for them, Ms. Tracy. Yeah, I, this is my thing. The old D.C. row houses <laughs> are <laughs> homes that are just touching each other. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. here's the here's the wall, the brick and everything, and it's just going to touch the brick and the wall. I'll use my hand. Like that. Uh-huh. Okay. A townhouse in the suburb is different. Yeah. They're buildings. They're one big building, but they put a five, they put a three hour firewall mm -hmm. in between the walls. Tracy used to sell them. Okay. I used to sell them all the time. <laughs> so the newer version mm -hmm. is is going to share an actual wall. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't tear down the middle one and the other ones still stand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In DC, you can tear down that one in between and okay. the one the other ones will still be there. Yeah. That's the difference with row houses and townhouses. Yeah, they were, they, were, they were built different back in the day. Yeah, so even though when you look at them, it's like, oh, they're all attached. Mm -hmm. They are, but they're not. Yeah. They're not. And a, 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 a big trend in the city, too, is that you people are uh, going up yeah. on the row houses, right? And so you might buy a, a row house that's, that's three levels, and maybe you go into your real estate project, and now you take it up another level. Maybe you create some outdoor space on the top. People are doing really creative things. Yeah. I know in New York they even they're even going down, right? They're so they're digging. they're digging into the basement and creating other levels down there, right? And so they don't really do, do you, that here. You can though. do creative things, but yeah, they don't do that a lot here. They go up. They go up. So yeah. people like will buy it they'll buy a row house. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's two level and they make and it three level. They might even tear it down. Mm -hmm. They'll tear down the house, like I said, in the middle tear of the other studs. houses. Take it all the way down. Just leave the facade mm -hmm. just because they want it to look like the rest of the block. Yep. But then they'll gut the whole thing mm -hmm. and then go all the way up. We'll try to do like a little tour and show you what they're doing around town. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, that'll be nice, baby. Yeah, that'll be nice. A couple okay. hours in the car with you, baby. <laughs> It'll be so much fun. That's what we do. <laughs> What's the best place to buy affordable furniture in the DMV? Wow. North Carolina? <laughs> Affordable I'm sorry, y'all. With uh, consignment? Yeah. Consignment stores mm -hmm. are the best have for you done, me. Have you done a uh, deep dive into the furniture I, game I'm here? trying. I'm trying. It's more difficult. I uh -huh. lived in North Carolina for 10 years. Right. And it was like, psh, nothing. Mm, yeah. Go get some. I, I got a Bernhardt couch. Mm -hmm. I got a $6,000 couch for $1,500, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it's. So Wayfair, Amazon, no, North Carolina. No, don't do Wayfair. No. no. So. <laughs> He, well, doesn't, he doesn't buy the furniture. I don't yet. buy the furniture. I just, <laughs> I just enjoy it. Um, but right now, if you go through our house and find the uh, uh, and look at the the various pieces that we have, a lot of them are North Carolina manufacturers, yeah. right? It's Barnhart, it's Hickory, it's some of that kind of stuff. It's things that we found um, in consignment stores. Yeah, it's um, uh, all of the stuff that Trace is describing. So, so yeah. If you uh if you really want to do a deep dive on furniture, definitely check out the North Carolina game all down there through Hickory. One of our favorite places, Atlanta Angel eighty four. We've been going to Gravely Point. Mm -hmm. Gravely Point, you should see Gravely Point now, y'all. Gravely Point is Hey, shout out Atlanta place, Angel, welcome. The place. Gravely Point. Gravely Point is a uh, right off of um, the Parkway in Which Virginia. What Parkway is that, baby? Uh, GW Parkway mm -hmm. in Virginia, mm -hmm. um, on the Virginia side, and mm -hmm. you can sit in this park and watch the planes take off. It's on the Potomac. It's huge. It's a party on mm -hmm. the weekends when the weather breaks. It's oh, a straight no party, Atlanta Angel eighty four. Oh, yeah. It's a straight party. Oh yeah. And it's just so cool. The people bike riding by. You can bike ride all the way from one end of Virginia all the way to Old Town, Alexandria. It's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Does Nova DC area feel southern? I'm a southern girl. That's an excellent that's an excellent question, Dylan. <sighs> I'm a southern girl. Southern girl. And I, I am I, I love it. Recently. I love it here. I love I love it here. It southern does not feel girl. like New York. It does not feel like California. No, it definitely does, it does not feel, not feel, like, feel New like Chicago. It does not feel like it doesn't even feel like Houston. Yeah. It feels like See, I grew up in South Florida, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in South Florida, they say we're not Southern there either, but we're very Southern. 
And <laughs> I would equate it to yeah, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. You mm-hmm. get grits, you get sweet tea, uh-huh, uh-huh. you get accents, yeah. you get uh all of that. But it's also very multicultural, right? Yeah. And so it has it's kinda kinda laced with intelligentsia and people who are who are very educated uh around formal education and worldly people people from all types of different uh, yeah. cultural backgrounds and so it has kind of a different flavor than than a lot of other places so th- those are that combination of ho- southern hospitality laced with uh, intelligentsia, I think, is what I enjoy about the area. I I love that. It doesn't matter if someone has gone to school and got a bunch of degrees oh, yeah. or anything. They know what you're talking Look, about. Look, people, people in D.C. with no degree will give they you will some. Give you, they will school you on local yes, politics. I love it. National politics. I love it. Uh, what's, what's happening out here in these streets? Let me tell you, uh, D.C. people... They they got they are educated on a lot of different levels. So when you say Southern, is that what you're referring to? The the vernacular, mm-hmm. the the food. Mm-hmm. Yes. The answer. If if you're talking vernacular, if you're talking food, if you're talking how nice the people are, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. It feels it feels somewhat like South Florida, but somewhat like uh, mm, it doesn't really. Maybe Savannah in mm-hmm. a way. The 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 cultural aspect of it. Maybe. Yeah, I can't really speak on Savannah. You can't speak on Savannah. Mm-mm. I ain't never spent that much time in Savannah. Yeah, we just spent a little bit of time. It gives me that feel, that old, that that look, that mm-hmm. the, the importance of keeping it the way that it looks, mm-hmm. in the way that people take care of their yards, mm-hmm. in the way that people their homes look. Mm-hmm. To me, that's Southern culture. Okay. It's just something about us and having that pride and mm-hmm. the way our yard looks and our gardens and how our homes look, mm-hmm. and just having that homey kind of feel. The answer is yes. Okay. And yet, so flow in the building. I call it the bottom. So the flow. Bottom, bottom, y'all. This was a great What's show. What's up, drama? What's up, drama boy? Eight seven six. Yes, y'all. We up on the hour. Look at that. I'm excited to be around the intelligence. Yes. We're looking forward to seeing you, uh, kid. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. This yeah, gonna you're gonna nice. enjoy it. You're gonna enjoy it. Um, so designing your life. We had a lot of questions today. It's all good, man. So designing. Your life. What were you going to talk about? Let's tell them real quick. Let's give them five minutes, baby, because I think it's so important. I'm going to give you your little bit of music as you work over into that. Let me see. Is this a song? What song is this? Give y'all a little break here. We go all night. I think that's this song, y'all. And then we're going to give you a little five minutes of what's good. What what's good going on right now, and yeah. why you need to focus on? Yeah, designing your life. <laughs> you trying to do my part? No. Will you let me feel, stop. Let me you, stop. This is the, the section of the show that we like to refer to as designing your life, because if you're going to move, if you're going to uproot yourself from where you are, then don't just move, but design your life. Right, so I ran across an article, and I thought it made a lot of sense for our audience. Uh, and, and the title of the article was "A Once in a Lifetime Chance to Start Over." I love that. I love that. It's time to prepare for a new and better normal than your pre-pandemic life. Think about that, y'all. This is a chance to start over. How about that? Like completely start over. Just <sighs> what was what was. What can be better? What yeah. can I do better? So the article, um, the, the the juxtaposition of the article was really talking about this. Uh, it, it used an example of this woman who was in a car crash, and she, you know, had a head injury. She ended up with amnesia, and what she decided was that she wanted to change, like some of her friends. She wanted to really take a deep dive into what was interesting to her, what made her happy what wasn't making her happy and she just became this kind of different person I love and her parents explained to her friends as oh you know she got that bump on the head and so forth and so on and when they started talking with her about why she was making these changes she's like no 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 i'm i'm creating happiness i'm creating love i had some it. time oh, to i had some time to just step away from my regular regimen in my life and really decide what I wanted, right? And so the idea is that this is the analogy that we all are experiencing post-panorama, 
right? We had this this time to really reflect that we we had uh, um, more time than we've ever had. Yeah. We were able to get off of the treadmill, so to speak, in our lives. The rat race. And really look at, wow, this is just, this is different, right? And so now as we begin to look at what it looks like on the other side, yeah, what did we... Well, let me. I want to read. I want to read this. Cause I want to read this first portion because I want people to really, to really get what I'm saying here. And so uh, it says today, many of us have an opportunity to do something similar. Americans might be entering the waning days of the year, plus coronavirus pandemic, during which life's ordinary patterns have paused for millions of people. In these last weeks and months before something resembling normality returns, we might ask ourselves, what do I want normal to look like? Then we can start preparing for a new and better normal than what we took for granted until a year ago. People talk about life before the virus. Yeah. Their recollections are often sentimental. Oh, about the good Good old old days. days about what we miss. In a recent survey, the specific things people said they yearned for most were traveling, 24%, visiting family, 19%, Mm -hmm. and hanging out with friends, 16%. Now, uh, in those surveys, we haven't haven't found um, some some things that we don't miss from the pre-pandemic, but here, but here's the idea. What you want to do is you want to think about Get your pieces of paper, guys. Here, wa- here, here's here come the points. So the the number one point is do some data collection. Collect the right? data. Write down on a piece of paper. You know, just kind of maybe draw a two by two matrix, uh, and the columns you want to you want to have your what you like and what you dislike. Pros and cons list. Ha! Huh, that sounds familiar. Right. So the rows are pre pandemic and pandemic. Mm-hmm. Many of us have taken to asking each other over the past year or so what we miss from before pandemic Mm. and what we hate about living through it. But for your happiness, the more germane questions are, what did I dislike from before the pandemic and don't miss? And what do I like from the pandemic times that I will miss? Okay. So just sort of go through that, right? Now, the next thing you want to do is make a list of things that you want to leave behind. Like, Ooh. I ain't dealing with this no more. These pounds. Leave, <laughs> leave them pounds behind. Leave the, any kind of thing Bad that, habits. Is, that is not vibing with your, yep. your spirit. Leave that behind. And then the third thing you want to do is make a list of the things that you want to keep. I'm going to keep you. What? You going to keep me, baby? I'm going to keep you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so happy about that. So, uh, uh, and I think that when you do that, you know, you have a nice uh, directory for yourself and for your life and how you want your life to be moving forward, right? And so in the spirit of designing your life, these are the things that Trace and I are talking about each week, right? So if you're going to move, if you're moving to the DMV, you know, it doesn't have to be the same paradigm that you've always had, right? It can be completely different. It can be something that you're doing that's very different. Uh, you know, how do you want to commute? Do you want to not have to commute anymore? Do you want to find a job that enables you to work from home? Do you want to create your own job? Do you want to create your own business? Do you want to live closer to your family? Do you want to live further away from your family? <laughs> do you have some friends that you would love to engage with and have uh, a, a life near them? Uh, you know, do you want to have more dinner parties? Uh, Do you want to work in uh, a completely different industry, right? So there's so many questions and things that the panorama has taught us. So just think about that today. Hey, what do you want to leave behind? And what do you want to add that you've you've come to know and love uh, in this post-panoramic life? We love y'all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Show some love. Show some love. And remember. Whatever you're going to do, don't just live there design your life there we love you guys join us next saturday and we'll put all these things in the description have a great saturday